Time now for everybody's favorite guessing game, What's My Line? Throughout the world, only one company produces all types of business machines and systems, Remington Rand, who now invites you to play What's My Line? Now let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the delightful star of stage and television, Miss Arlene Francis. And now, a gentleman who has just returned with his wife from being a smashing success at the Fontainebleau in Miami. He's going to be a smashing success here with us tonight, Mr. Peter Lynn Hayes. Thank you very much, Arlene. It's, uh, we have a jolly group here because of the snow. The second row is packed. I can see that from here. <laughs> On my left, a very talented lady, newspaper woman, a member of the fourth estate, and I'd like to have a fourth of her estate. <laughs> she just returned from Cuba, Senorita Dorothy of Kilgallen, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, now I would like to introduce a gentleman who has just returned from East 62nd Street, mushed all the way, Mr. Bennett Sears. And now on my left, a man who is not only a preeminent news commentator and our panel moderator, but eight of the ten best, friend, best dressed men in America, Mr. John Charles Davis. Bennett. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line. We have uh, some very interesting occupations tonight, mm -hmm. and with Peter Lind Hayes back visiting us again, it is our dearest hope that we shall send him home with a decent respect for the kind of occupations we bring. In other words, they won't get any of them. We'll also have a famous mystery guest a bit, little bit later in the show, but right now, let's meet our first contestant. Will you come in and sign in, please? Black? Black beaver, is that right? That's um, a bit of a strange name. We haven't had uh, one like that. That is my Cheyenne name. I'm Are you? Full-blooded Cheyenne Indian. Full-blooded Cheyenne Indian, and you're known as Black Beaver. Right. All righty, fine. We'll presume there's another name that you use otherwise, but this is certainly good enough. Where are you from? Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Fine. Well, we'll use Black Beaver if it's all right with you. Okay? Fine. Uh, Black Beaver, the panel. Panel, Black Beaver. Will you come with me now, please? And sit right down here. Do you know how we keep score, sir? Yes. Fine. If you do, let's let the folks at home and our friends here in the theater know exactly what your line is. Black Beaver is salaried, and let's begin the general questioning with Dorothy Kilgallen. Uh, Black Beaver, uh, may I call you both names, or should I call you Black or Mr. Beaver? I'm not quite sure. Both names. Oh, all right. Uh, Black Beaver, you have an exceptionally fine physique. Do you do anything that might be considered athletic? No. No, I don't think so. One down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. Black Beaver, you're salaried. Uh, do you work possibly for a non-profit making organization? Yes. You do work for non... The reason I ask that is you, you have a keen look. Are you, have you anything to do with uh, the apprehension of criminals of any kind? No. Two down and eight to go, Miss <laughs> Francis. He was an FBI man. No. <laughs> Black Beaver, I want you to think of me as white mink. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to ask you to forgive me, but I didn't understand what the tribe was. Which tribe is it? Cheyenne. Cheyenne. Do you hold a position of importance in the Cheyenne tribe? No. 
That makes it three down and seven to go. You Mr. should. Hayes. They're making a terrible mistake. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Peter Lind. Did you have to have a reservation to get into this country? That'll be all. <laughs> No, I, I'm just joking. My son said that Christmas Day, and I thought it was rather attractive. Um, are you... Uh, did we establish that he was connected with athletics? No, The question wasn't. was asked it in was that area, and a negative answer was given. And are you connected with any uh, branch of the government? Yes. And you said it didn't have to do with law enforcement. Is that right? That's right. Is it the federal government? Yes. Federal government... Federal Bureau of Indians, <laughs> FBI. <laughs> well, uh, would you have anything to do, say, for instance, uh, with a Congress or a meeting of some sort that would contribute to the welfare of the Indians? No. Four down and six to go, Miss Kilgallen. Are you a member of the armed forces? Yes. That is your current job? Um, you do have a keen look. Do you operate any sort of a um, naval or airship or have anything to do with the operation of a naval or airship? Yes. Now I just have to find out which. Which? Uh, is it an airship? Yes. Uh, is it a special... Are you a pilot? Yes. Yes. That's right, Dorothy. Actually, oh. I think we have to give it to you on that. More specifically... Yes. Second Lieutenant Lawrence Hart is a jet fighter pilot with the United States Marines. Oh. Actually, Lieutenant Hart, if we may now go to the name that you use every day, how did you get into the uh, Marine Air Corps? I went through the aviation cadet program. Ah, uh, fine. You like it? Oh, yes. I really love it. There's an old uh, Marine friend of mine, uh, Lieutenant Colonel or Light Colonel or Lieutenant Colonel Andrew Gear out in the West Coast. Do you know him by any chance? He's written a lot about the Marine Corps. One of the finest books on the Korean War was written by no, Andy Gear, as a matter of fact, The New Breed. But it's about Marines, and you ought to get a hold of it because you have good reason to be proud of your service, and uh, I think Andy Gear has written the story very well. It's rather been out for a few years, but uh, I think you'd like to read it. Thank you very much for coming to see us, and uh, do you have any relationship at all with the Cheyenne tribe now? Do you go out and participate at all? No. You don't at all. You just, the Marines take all your time. Yes. They usually do. Thanks very much. It's nice to have had you with us. Thank you. Well, at the very good beginning panel, let's see what we can do, however, with the second challenger. Will you come in and sign in, please? Right there. Lewis? Castaneda, is that right? Yes, sir. Uh, actually, I think we'll dispense with any further information where you're concerned, only because there is a, some possibility you would tell too much, all right? Good deal. I want you to... Here is the panel right here. Very fine group of people, for the moment, anyway. Come on in and sit down with me, would you? Do you know how we keep score? Every time you give a no answer, we flip a card and ten no's, and you've won the game. All set? And let's let everybody at home and our friends here know exactly what your line is. All right. Mr. Castaneda is salaried, and let's begin the general questioning with Bennett Cerf. Mr. Castaneda, is that a Spanish name that yes. you have? <clears throat> Do you come from either Spain or one of the Spanish-American countries? Well, from uh, Spain, yes. Spain. Uh, do this you... does not... Uh, actually, this is here goes to the basic, where he basically comes from, Bennett, on the yes. question that you yes. asked. Not a necessarily present dwelling place. Senor Castaneda, uh, is there a product connected with your work? No, sir. No, not by our terms of reference. One down and nine to go, Miss Francis. Mr. Castaneda, senor, <laughs> do you have to be agile in your particular job? Yes, I think it requires some degree of agility. Do you have anything to do with an animal in your job? An animal? No. <laughs> Two dollars and eight to go, Mr. Hay. He's not a bullfighter. No, no Toreador. Have you met Ava Gardner? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I was going along the same lines that Arlene uh, 
was approaching there, I would uh, be inclined to think that you had something to do that might be considered of a physical nature. Is this true? You mean specifically uh, requiring a special physical talent, etc.? Well, I'll pinpoint it and say athletically inclined. Does it have anything to do with sports? Oh, fine. That's what we were hoping you'd do. That's three down <laughs> and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. <laughs> Uh, well, do you occupy uh, some sort of a job that might be considered at least partially executive? No, I don't think we can call what you do executive. No, that's four down and six to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Castaneda or Senor Castaneda, is there any music in your life? Like Castaneda? <laughs> I didn't mean playing the Castanetas either. You mean no, the I mean, he is, himself? Is, is there music in some way involved in the work that you do? No, sir. No, I don't think so, Bennett. Five down and five to go, Miss Francis. But you did admit, uh, Senor Castaneda, that you do have to be a little agile in your job. Is that correct? Some... Some agility, agility is required. Agility, yes, is required. Uh, is there anything about your job that would be considered dangerous? <laughs> no, I don't... <laughs> to bother to be agile if it isn't dangerous. I wouldn't make a move if it wasn't dangerous. <laughs> Why, Arlene, that's not no, true. No, this, this agility, I think, is required, but I don't think we can say that this is no, dangerous no, anyway. About the best you, you might get off. Well, never mind. Mr. Hay. No. Would it have anything to do with a, uh, with uh, a particular style of food? Particular style of food? Oh, I, I mean, can with... so. I can see it coming. No, <laughs> oh, you got it. Oh, That's no. 7,003 to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, Senor, is what you do more uh, popular or more indigenous to Spain or a Spanish-American country uh, than it is to the people of the United States of America? <laughs> is it more popular and more indigenous? Or more indigenous. I don't think we would agree, Dorothy, that Americans have any less interest in the service which Mr. Castaneda has to deliver than those in Spain or Latin America. Mr. Castaneda, uh, <laughs> do you perform a personal service then of some sort? <laughs> no, no, I don't, don't think we could call it a personal not service. A personal. No, nine down and one to go, Miss Francis. Oh, now, wait a minute. We're in big trouble here. We've only got one to go and we've got no place. And there is no product connected with what Mr. Right, Senor Castaneda does. Uh, uh, do you have anything to do with locomotion in any way? Is it a good idea for you to be associated with locomotion? Or are you? I don't think we would describe exactly what Mr. Castaneda does as having to do with locomotion. If he moves from one place to another, it's locomotion. Well, he doesn't. He stays pretty still because when you're managing a roulette wheel, it's the wheel that goes around and the ball just goes around in the dick. And Mr. Castaneda is the man who runs a roulette wheel and he runs it in a little place called Wilbur Clark's Casino in the Nacional Hotel in Havana, Cuba, and he took $20 away from Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. <laughs> well, I just have a mental block against fellows who do that to me. <laughs> I want well, to forget him. Miss Dorothy, I think you have because he came up on the same airplane with you, too. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I must say, sir, if I may, because I imagine you're going back down to the Nacional and, and to the casino, that um, I told Miss Dorothy about my being down there, how much I enjoyed it, and she, you have a new devotee. She had a wonderful time in Havana, even if you did take $20 away from her. Now, that's a fine compliment. It was well worth it. Well worth it. And I thank you very like much, Mr. Uh, Gutt. It was nice to have John, you in. I'd like to ask one question. Uh, what, are, what do you consider the lucky numbers down there? The lucky number? Yeah. Either one. Either one? <laughs> <laughs> Big help. Thank you, Mr. Gasson. I'd like to have you on. In just a moment, we meet tonight's mystery. Now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity, for which my friends and the panel are all blindfolded. Blindfolds in place, panel? Yes, yes sir. John. Good. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? Challenger, we go to a different form of questioning. You ask one question at a time in turn, moving clockwise, and we'll begin it all with Arlene Francis. 
heavens. <laughs> well, from that reaction, you are no Johnny-come-lately. Uh, have you been admired by audiences in mo motion picture theaters? <laughs> Got a bad tooth. That's yes. Mr. Hayes? Judging from that ovation, do you play a guitar and sing? <laughs> Nope. But it, One down and nine to go, Mr. Gilbert. Yeah, long sideburns. Oh. <laughs> well, he couldn't have long sideburns if he doesn't play a guitar and sing. Oh, that was Whistler's Sorry. mother. I missed that answer. Oh. What does that mean when he whistles? That was, that was a no, a no wasn't whistle. it? Oh, I thought yeah. it was How do you know it's a man? It's a I man's don't. whistle. Uh, <laughs> do you play or sing anything? I mean, do you play anything or sing? <laughs> yes? No? <laughs> Yes and no, that is. It isn't necessarily the only area of um, achievement. Mr. Sir? Well, uh, I'm going to cut this Gordian knot right now. Are you a man? <laughs> yeah. Miss Francis? Wow. <laughs> Have you appeared in the theater? <laughs> yep. Yeah. Mr. Hayes? Have you appeared in a currently uh, a popular motion picture? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Miss Gilgallan? Are you more associated with motion pictures than with the stage? This, not to mislead you, I would say that there is a very great area of identification in both the theater and motion pictures, although I would be willing to agree that in present terms, the emphasis might be on motion pictures. Mr. Sir. Have you won any... Uh of the year's top awards from any of these committees that are giving out prizes all over the place? <laughs> Don't know. What's that? Is that a yes? Yes, yes that's right. <laughs> Miss Francis? That's a yes? Yeah. That narrows it down to about I'm going 3, to ask uh, our guest to use his voice hereafter, because I think perhaps we ought to give you a break. Do you have blonde curly hair? <laughs> one of the first television shows Mary and I ever did called The Star Club, and is your name Yule Brenner? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know what Daddy can. <laughs> hey, daddy -o. That's wonderful. I must say, I have a very special affection for you. In my early days in television, I don't know whether he'd even remember it. We used to do a television program called We Take Your Word. Remember? We used to have more fun. It was derivation of words, you know. And we used to, uh, I think, very often play to what might be called a very small audience, but we liked it, didn't we? Oh, yes. We liked it very much. I we think Mr. Bonnet uh, misled us at one point. You How do so? play a guitar. But not he professionally. Said yes. He said yes. No, well, he yeah, plays it in Anastasia. Or... Oh, yes. That's right. My fault, then. I thought Take we care. got a qualified yes from that. We did on the music. We said that there was a qualification. Anyway, it's always nice to music. hear you talk, Yule, and it is to hear you whistle. As much <laughs> as we like to have you whistle it up. That, that is you playing it in our stage, isn't it? That wasn't a double. Yes, yes. Yeah. You do I, play I it yourself. Play it. He sings, too. He's an old guitar yeah. player. In yeah, the most beautiful crew cut I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> Yule, it's wonderful to see you again after all these years, and nobody you. has taken as much pleasure as I from your tremendous success, and you deserve it, too. Good to Thank see you, Danny. Thank, Thank you, sir. white mink in her blonde curly hair. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see what we can do with the final challenger, please. Will our next challenger come in and sign in? <laughs> Lillian? Che? Deckel. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. 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 and where are you from? The Bronx. The Bronx? Oh, you're a neighbor. You know all these people then, don't you? At least you recognize them. Will you come over here and sit down, please? And you know how we keep score? Yes. All right, let me get things back to zero here. And we'll let everybody 
At home, those with us know exactly what your line is. is salaried, and let's begin the general questioning with Peter Lind Hayes. Mrs. Chideco, do you deal in services? No. Uh, I guess. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> Not sure, eh? Would I be happy to avail myself of your services? At times. I would say that under certain circumstances, the service here could give you much pleasure. Would it at any time make me unhappy to have your services? That's possible. You don't yank teeth, do you? No. <laughs> <laughs> You've had it. No, yes, that one. One down and nine to go, Miss. Wait a minute. You don't yank no, that's teeth. Yes, that's right. No. Double yes, negative you is don't affirmative. Yank sorry. Teeth. All right, Peter, I did it. I'm sorry. <laughs> you go ahead, Pappy. Um, would a person come to you for these services? No. One down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, could ladies as well as gentlemen avail themselves of your services? Yes. And it would be the same degree of happiness or unhappiness involved? Yes. Is there any product involved? No. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. <clears throat> then, Mrs. Chideco, you perform a service of some kind. Yes. And you go to people to perform it. Yes. Uh, do you do this service indoors? Yes. Uh... Is, uh, would you say that the uh, service that you render is more of a mental type than a physical type? Mm, yes. Yes, let me have just a small cut. All right, go ahead, Bennett. It is more of a mental type. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Would you say that you give these lucky people that you visit advice of some kind? No. No. That's three down and seven to go. Miss Francie. Mrs. Chidical, would you go mostly to homes rather than to offices? Uh, yes. Uh, when you go there, do you ask for some information of some kind? Yes. Uh, you are salaried, did you say, John? Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, do you inquire as to how many there are in the family? Mm. Would that be of any importance to you to know that in your job? Yes. She's never been to our house. Yes, I would say that's a question of my Do turn. you garner from your travels around a certain statistical uh, number? I mean, do you arrive at a statistical result? Uh, yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you inquire about what people are doing regarding a certain thing? Yes. Do you ask them if they ever listen to What's My Line? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. You're kidding, aren't you, Alan? No. Yes, You're no. kidding? No, no. All right, go ahead, dear. <laughs> do you think you maybe do do something like that? Yes. She does do so. You're trying to get me out of it, weren't you? It was a very bad filibuster, John. You got nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, then, are you sort of one of the people that works on uh, poles? Yes. You, what kind? Greased or just played? Now, you oh. know perfectly well. <laughs> Big pardon, Molly. I wonder whether Mrs. Chetico works on a survey of some kind to garner information regarding people's likes and dislikes as to television, radio, or some such thing in programming. I'm afraid you're right, Arlene. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mrs. Chidical works for <clears throat> Pulse, which is familiar to all of you and to our viewing public. If you are not familiar with it, it's one of the prominent rating services. They query people in their homes and then de determine by very scientific processes, which are beyond my competence, at least, just how many of uh, the certain citizens of a town look at television how shows. How are we doing, so Mrs. Chittico? Oh, very well. Are we doing well? That's fine. You should yeah. give some advice from now on tell them to listen to Watch My Line. Oh, it's a wonderful program. Thank well, you. now, that's fine. Thank you. I suppose it actually <laughs> wouldn't be... It would be unethical for you to become one of our, shall we say, uh, publicists when you go I'm out on this. I'm afraid I could. But if you can I slick have to be unbiased. Be unbiased. <laughs> just say that you're completely unbiased about Watch My Line. It's very good. You do that. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, Miss Nice to have you. Now, before our
our panel says good night, here is a word from next week's sponsor. And uh, so, until next week at about this same time, or 29 minutes and a few seconds earlier, this is John Daly saying good night to Miss Arlene Francis. Hello. Oh, I was just thinking about Yul Brynner in the Ten Commandments. We forgot to talk about that, and he's so good in it. But he doesn't need blonde curly hair. No, I just happened to think about it. He is very ah, good. Ah, well. Good night, Peter Lynn Hayes. Good night. And when you're bald-headed, I'll talk to you more nicely, too. I just want to remind you, good night, Mrs. Gable. <laughs> <laughs> also, what better way to close the show than a, my favorite epitaph? I think you'll enjoy this. It appeared on the tombstone of a hypochondriac, and all it said was, you see, I told you I was sick. <laughs> good night, Dorothy. Good night, Peter. Good night, Bennett. Good night, John. No time for more. No. <laughs> good night, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for being with us on What's My Line? <laughs> Travel arrangements on What's My Line are made through American Airlines. American Airlines flies our contestants in luxurious comfort aboard DC-7 flagships. What's My Line is a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production in association with the CBS television network. Be sure to see Remington Rand's great television program.